What's up everyone, back for another vlog, and in today's vlog, I will be showing you the holiday-themed beers that I'll be reviewing for the month of December 2023. So for the third consecutive year, I am replacing Shelfie Beer Reviews with holiday-themed beer reviews for the month of December. And the reason for that is, it seems like everybody really enjoys these, myself included. Now this year I toyed with the idea of potentially doing an advent calendar, but I have a bunch of beer in the fridge from uh, friends and viewers and stuff that I picked up in November that I was like, you know what, 24 straight uh, reviews of an advent calendar box, not going to work this year, not going to work this year. So maybe next year I'll do a better job of prepping for a potential advent calendar and we will uh, do one. There's a lot of uh, local bottle shops here that do advent calendars and i'll probably go with uh, premier gourmets they had one this year unfortunately i had to opt out because of all the beer but next year we might make it a go but anyway so yeah the last couple years uh during the month of december i forego pretty much uh, shelfy beer reviews replace them with holiday themed beer uh reviews and the reason for that for me specifically is that it gives me an excuse for a lack of a better word to review holiday themed beers in the month of december so um again last two years i really really enjoyed doing them so i'm bringing them back this year now these are going to work in a very similar manner to how I uh, review and post Shelfy Beer Reviews. Typically, Shelfy Beer Reviews, I post on every single Tuesday and Friday of e each month. And typically, in any given month, there's usually eight or nine Tuesdays and Fridays. However, when it comes to these specifically, I kind of play around whatever days that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, I know, New Year's Day, January 1st, I know, it's still part of the occasion, but I kind of play um, how, I, how I post these around those four dates. So this year, I will be posting these reviews on Mondays and Thursdays with two special reviews on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, which both fall on a Sunday, Christmas Day, and Chris, uh, Christmas Day and New Year's Day fall on a Monday, therefore Monday and Thursdays. And because there are nine Mondays and Thursdays in the month of December, along with the two special beer reviews on Christmas Eve and uh, New Year's Eve, we do have 11 beers here in front of me. Now from your left to right, these are in order and how I'm going to post them. This is the first of the month and this will be the last of the month. So I tried to get a pretty good spread and wide variety as much as I could, um, you know, doing these the last two years and then before that doing other, you know, uh, Christmas slash holiday themed beers. Um, the it's slim pickings out there, uh, to be honest with you, especially for beers that a lot of you can get. So I tried my best to get some that I feel a lot of people in uh, the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, the New England area, maybe even the Midwest could uh, get also a couple other beers that are bigger that a lot of people can get. So let's go over them real quick and we will start with day one. The first one that I will be reviewing comes from the Boston Beer Company, AK Samuel Adams, and it is their old Fezziwig Ale, the 2023 release. So full disclosure, I've reviewed this one before. This is going to be the rare re-review here on the Beer Patrol. I reviewed the 2019 release back in 2019. However, there, there's two reasons why I want to re-review this beer. Number one, the 2019 release to me was underwhelming. And this is a beer that I used to drink pretty much every single year. I would specifically buy their winter variety pack, used to be called the Winter Classics, now called Beers for Cheers, just to get two bottles of this and two bottles of the Holiday Porter. That's pretty much why I bought the uh, the, the mixed uh, 12 pack. Um, however, 2019 was a disappointing to me. I don't know if my palate was off. Um, I feel like Sam Adams doesn't have huge uh, batch variations, so I don't know. Something was off. However, I bought the Beers for Cheers mix pack last year, and I had two of these off camera, and to me, they were really hitting, really tasty, and reminded me of why I like this beer to begin with. So this year, I was like, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to re-review it. Maybe again, 2019, my palate was off. Uh, maybe, maybe it was a bad batch. I don't know. I, it didn't seem like it. just seemed like I was one of the few that really didn't care for it too much. And the other reason is because for years, Samuel Adams fans have been wanting this beer in its own six packs. And guess what? This year, they delivered. This comes in six packs this year. And I think that's cool as hell that this comes in six packs. So I picked up a single, um, hoping I enjoy it, and we are going to review it, and it'll be the first holiday-themed beer that I review this month, and I think that's appropriate. I hope it's as delicious as I remember. I don't think this is like my, my, my favorite holiday beer or anything, but I've always enjoyed this from Sam Adams, so I'm hoping it's back to where 
uh, I want it to be for my pal. Next, we have from Left Hand their newest release. This is their Candy Cane Nitro. And by the way, Old Fazwig 5.9%, 25 IBUs. It's basically an ale with, um, I think it's cinnamon, ginger, and orange peel. Uh, to me, I always said that beer was like a uh, gingerbread cookie or like a ginger snap or a molasses cookie with a little bit of like a fruitcake vibe to it. And that's why I've always enjoyed it. Anyway, so left hand, we have their Candy Cane Nitro. They're calling this one Imperial Peppermint Milk Stout. It comes in at 9.5%. And uh, yeah, so I had to grab this one. Um, I've said for a long time, left hand is the king of nitro beers here in the US. I'm gonna rein that in a little bit. I think they're the king of nitro beers that are stouts. Um, um, I've had a lot of their fruited uh, nitro beers and some of their non-stouted uh, ni non nitro beers, and they're more missed than hit for me. However, their stouts when it comes to nitro gain, I, I think it's just fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to this. Hopefully they didn't overdo it on the peppermint, but I think this is going to be a lot of fun to give a go. And I'm hoping it, it kind of you know has like a peppermint bark in, in nitro imperial stout form. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. We'll see if they deliver next. We have from Abomination, we have their a Wandering Into the Snow. So this is a double dry hop, double IPA with lactose and marshmallows. I think it's 9.1. What is the percentage? 9.1%. And this is a beer they release every single year, basically as part, I always call it a three pack, but they release three holiday beers. It's this, their Fognog, which is basically an eggnog inspired milkshake, a double IPA, and their Gingerbread Fog, which is like a gingerbread cookie uh, milkshake, a double IPA. This is just like a Basically, they, they they refer to this one as Marshmallow Fog. I don't know why they don't just call it Marshmallow Fog. Uh, but I love uh, the labeling on this one. And this is the only one of the three I've not had. I've reviewed the uh, Fog Nog, which was awesome, especially if you like eggnog. And then I actually reviewed the Gingerbread Fog as part of a mystery slash whodunit beer, which I absolutely nailed. I actually called out that beer, which is a rarity. And I like both of those beers quite a bit. I'm thinking I'll like this one, but without the spices, it might be a little bit too sweet. We'll see. I don't know. I'm definitely looking forward to giving it a go. Next, we have from Three Floyds, we have their Alpha Claw. So this is what they call a Christmas Porter. I, I don't think they have the ABV on here, do they? Alpha Claus is Alpha King's festive cousin, a big American Christmas porter brewed with English chocolate malt, Mexican sugar, and of course, a ton of strange, a ton of strange American hops. I think this is like 6.5%. I'll definitely look it up. I'm probably missing it. The labels from Three Floyds, obviously fantastic, but a lot of times they don't have the ABV. I think it's like 6.5, 6.3, something like this. I've had this once before, and this was kind of like almost a black IPA to some degree, uh, or just like a really hop forward porter. And I remember enjoying it. And these are like the only two hop forward beers that I'm drinking out of all 11 of these. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to them. And you know, Three Floyds makes good beer. And again, I had this one before, I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to give it a go this year. Next, we have from Allagash, we have their Snow Report. And they're calling this one a winter ale. And underneath that, it says Festive Honey Golden. 8.6%, I believe this is, it says ale with honey, but I believe this is, eh, Let's see, this wintry gold nail is made with local wildflower honey. I think the base, they just call it a um, gold nail. I think this is more in the realm of like a like a Belgian Saison or American Saison. I don't know. I'll do a little bit more re research on this one, but I saw it and I was like, you know what? I'm going to grab this one. They have the Beach Report, which they release in the summer. So this is their winter cousin. And I am going to enjoy that one because it's an Allagash beer. And I enjoy most Allagash beers. Next, we have the newest seasonal release from Great Lakes. This is their Cookie Milk Stout Exchange. Or maybe it's Cookie Exchange Milk Stout. Either way you look at it. Um, yeah, Cookie Exchange Milk Stout. So this is a 5.5%. And what they're going to do is I'm pretty sure they said that they are going to release a different variant of this each year. This one, I believe, I don't see it anywhere in the can. It definitely says it on the... Um, six pack, but I think it's supposed to be like a caramel vanilla shortbread cookie. So it's a milk stout trying to replicate a cookie in milk stout form, I guess. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I think it's 5.5%. Hopefully it's not too sweet, 5.5% with all of those. And it does say on the side, malt beverage with natural and artificial flavor. So hopefully they didn't do, you know, go too crazy with the sweetness. Next, we have a Belgian beer and one that uh, I've had once, maybe twice before, back in the early days of me drinking craft beer, so I'm talking 10 plus years ago, and it is uh, Guten Karaluz's, um Christmas. So this is basically 
a uh, Belgian, they call it Belgian Dark Special Ale. This is more or less a uh, Belgian Strong Dark Ale. It comes in at 10% alcohol by volume. They brew this one with, I believe it is, do they list it anywhere on here? I think it's like three different hop varieties and they say diff six different herb and spices. So I'm um, really excited about this one. I've not re uh, reviewed anything from Guten Carlos and I thought, why not start with the Christmas uh, beer that, again, I probably haven't had since like 2011, 12-ish, something like that. So it's been a very, very long time and we are gonna give it a go. And if you can see, I taped up the label in the front because when I got home, it ripped and it looked terrible. So we're gonna go with the, the shoddy uh, tape job here on the label. I wouldn't have it any other way on the Beer Patrol. Next, really excited for this, these two beers right here because I never thought I would see these just randomly show up in distro, picking them off the shelf. But this one right here is from Hardywood uh, Park Craft Brewery, and it is their Kentucky Christmas Morning, the 2023 release. So it's Imperial Milk Stout Age in Kentucky bourbon barrels with a ginger, vanilla, honey, cinnamon, and coffee added. 12.2% alcohol by volume, 55 IBUs, and uh, really excited about this one. Not only is it in a stubby bottle, which is, just makes it infinitely better, just instantly better. It, it's just, I can't believe that this beer and this beer over here are just showing up in stubby bottles in a distro. Um, I've never had this beer before, but last year I reviewed the uh, Christmas Morning. It was fantastic. One of the my favorite uh, holiday beers that I reviewed last year. And it wasn't even part of the holiday themed beers. I randomly saw it at a Wegmans Mix of Six uh, selection um, at, a, at a local Wegmans grocery store. And I was like, I got to try it. And it was awesome. This, this beer is basically um, the barrel-aged version of a Christmas Morning. And Christmas Morning is the base gingerbread stout from them, their GBS, with coffee added. So uh, I thought this would be awesome to review on Christmas uh, Day. This is going to be Christmas Eve. This is Christmas Day. And I think that's perfect to review this one on Christmas Eve. And this specifically on Christmas Day, Kentucky Christmas Morning, makes too much sense. And here on the Beer Patrol, we typically don't make sense. So in this case, I think we're making some sense. So really looking forward to these two, especially since they're on holidays. Next, we have from Victory, we have their layered up wintertime stout. This is just a 6.5% American stout. I'm pretty sure they're not brewing this with any kind of adjuncts or anything. And you know what? I think the misconception uh, when it comes to holiday beers is, you know, a lot of folks just think they're going to be like pumpkin beers where there's they're spices or there's got to be adjuncts. Or, they don't have to. As long as it invokes the holiday spirit or, or the Christmas spirit, I, I feel like it makes sense to just say, hey, here's a 6.5% American stout. Here's a hoppy uh, Christmas porter. It, they don't have to have a bunch of adjuncts in them. So I'm glad I was able to just grab this, which is just a 6.5% American stout. I like trying new stuff from Victory. So we're going to review it. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it, despite the fact that it has nothing added to it other than the core four ingredients. Next, for a New Year's Eve... I am going to go back to Hardywood Park Craft Brewery and review their a Bourbon Barrel GBS, aka Gingerbread Stout, the 2023 release. Now this, do they even have the ABV on here? They have all the information. The cr it's crazy, night and day, between the information they put on this label and the information they fail to put on this one. So this says Spiced Milk Stout Asian Bourbon Barrels, 12.2%, so exact same ABV. But yeah, it's it's basically just their GBS uh, Bourbon Barrel Age. And full disclosure, I've had this one before. I uh, had it courtesy of a uh, very good friend of mine and a fellow beer tuber, DJ, over at DJ's BrewTube. I'm sure uh, quite a few of you know DJ. He has not posted a lot over the last couple years, but him and I used to exchange beer mails back in the mid-2010s. And one of the first beer mails he sent my way, he sent me a bottle of the regular GBS and a um, barrel-aged version as well. They were in the huge 750s, uh, corked in cages. And uh, when he sent it to me, this was specifically leaking. And I had to drink it like right as I unpacked the beer mail. And it was one of the best barrel aged beers at that time I've ever had. I gave it a five out of five, thought it was amazing. So we're gonna see on New Year's Eve if this is indeed still a five out of five to me. I have no idea. That's why we reviewed the beer. So I'm really excited again for the two Hardywood beers. And I just love the stubby bottles. Do more stubby bottles during the holidays, please, please do it. Anyway, last but not least, on New Year's Day, no longer in December, but on New Year's Day, January 1st, 2024, I'm going to be reviewing a beer from Chogues, and it's the Mad Elf, the 2023 release. So this is, they call this one a holiday ale brewed with cherries and honey. I think it's like a Belgian, Belgian strong ale, basically. 11% um, alcohol by volume. A funny story about this one is that I actually have reviewed this one on the channel. However, 
it was an aged bottle and it was sent to me by a, a very good friend of mine and fellow beer tuber Kyle over at No Hype Beer Reviews. And he sent me an aged bottle. I think it was like 14 months old. I called it a Doppelbach as I was reviewing it. Um, the cherries kind of faded and it was just like this sweet malt driven kind of beer. Um, it was still really good, but it didn't remind me of every single time I've had the Mad Elf, which has been numerous times. Now, last I think it was last year or the year before, I reviewed the Grand Cru version of this, which uh, I think introduces sour cherries, and that was quite delicious. But this beer itself, uh, I haven't had in a couple years, and it's relatively fresh, so I'm going to actually properly review it fresh. I did say that I would probably not review this one just because I did it as the most authentic review as possible, right? Like a mystery slash blind slash who done a beer review where... I don't know what it is. I'm just reviewing it on uh, the uh, merits of the beer itself and, and you know nothing else. However, it was an aged bottle. And then Kyle did say he did had a vertical of this and he said the cherries oh, in his vertical dropped off immensely from year to year. So uh, I feel like it's a beer that I should definitely review. And here's the kicker. I said last year, it, on New Year's Day, every single year going forward, I would review Anchor's Christmas Ale because the recipe changes every year and I thought it would be good to end the year with or begin the, the next year with that beer. Um, we all know what happened to Anchor this year. So that is not a thing and that is very unfortunate. Hopefully the brewery is somehow saved. Maybe somebody you know buys it. Maybe the recipes are taken over by another brewery and they, and they continue the tradition alive. Uh, but it's really a bummer that this year there is no Christmas Elf from Anchor and uh, I'm gonna try to make up for it with Trogues. Trogues the Mad Elf, we'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's a bummer that Anchor is, is no longer really uh, with us, I, I would say, as far as far as I know, I haven't had any updates about you know if the brewery saved or what's going on. Uh, the last thing I remember hearing is something about I think the uh, I think some of the brewers and employees at Anchor were trying to uh, buy the brewery, but I haven't heard anything in a couple months. So anyway, uh, yeah, these are the eleven. Count them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven holiday themed beers I'm reviewing this month. I might sprinkle in a couple others as well. Um, I have a couple others that I didn't pick. They didn't make the grade, so to speak, for uh, the holiday themed beers that I'm doing like this, but I might sneak some in. I do have a bunch of like big barrel aged beers that I will be drinking. Got a couple um, other like uh, lagers and a couple other you know, fruited, uh, like I, I'll, I'll just tell you that I picked up like four Boulevard beers, three barrel aged ones, and then their Cranberry Tank 7. I'll probably be reviewing some of those. But for the most part, these are going to be the holiday themed beers. And I think I have a pretty good selection. So in the comment section, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, which beers are you looking forward to me reviewing the most? Uh, I think I've said it like three times in the review, but these two hardy beers, hardy wood beers are at the top of the food chain for me. Uh, the Gouden Carolus, um, obviously the Mad Elf to see how it is. But this is up there too, just because I'm hoping it's delicious. But I picked all of these, so obviously I'm looking forward to all of them. So yeah, be on the lookout for reviews of these beers every single Monday and Thursday in the month of, excuse me, in the month of December here. And then special reviews of this beer and this beer on uh, the two Sundays that are uh, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, respectively. So Anyway, I'm going to shut this one down. Probably a longer uh, vlog, but at the end of the day, I love talking about beer. And so post in the comment section, what, here's a question. If you watch to the end, post in the comment section, what beers you're looking forward to drinking this year for the holidays? What are some beers that every single year you have to buy at least a, a can or bottle of, or maybe a six pack or maybe even a 12 pack or a case? Are there any out there that you're just like, yeah, it's go time. It's you know it's December. I want to be drinking this next to a warm fire. If you're in a warmer climate, I guess weather doesn't really matter, but I would love to hear from you. Love the interaction. Please post in the comment section. Let me know what you think about it. So appreciate everybody stopping by for another vlog. And until the next one, cheers.